Hey guys, welcome back. In today's video, we're gonna be talking about screening. And with screening, there is so much to talk about that we're most likely not gonna be able to cover everything in one video. But what we are gonna talk about in this video is why you should be screening and why it's so important, uh, what you should be screening. And then finally, we're gonna be talking about different types of screens. So right off the bat, what is screening and why is it so important? Think about screening like a privacy fence. If you have a really obnoxious neighbor, you put up a privacy fence because you don't wanna hear or see whatever it is they're doing on their side of the fence, right? Now try to think about it the same way with whitetail habitat in laying out your property. You don't wanna see the deer and the deer don't wanna see you, hear you, or smell you. And that brings me to the first thing that I wanted to talk about and that's why you should be trying to incorporate screening and placing such a high emphasis on screening on your property. And the number one reason is to hide hunter movement. You wanna try your best to screen off your property so that you're able to move around your entire property without spooking deer. If you're bumping deer on the way to or from your stand, you're increasing the hunting pressure on your property and you're reducing the chances that those deer are going to either move during daylight or stay on your property at all. But again, if you're able to move to and from stands or around your property without spooking deer, then the chances of those deer remaining on those patterns, whatever those patterns may be, is gonna be more likely. Ensuring that you have consistent and predictable deer movement on your property plays a critical role in your hunting success. Now, again, if you're spooking deer or bumping deer on the way to and from your stands, the chances that that deer movement is gonna remain consistent and remain predictable is much lower than if you were not spooking deer. And screening plays a huge part in making sure that you can move to and from your stands without spooking deer. Another nice thing about being able to get to and from your stands without spooking deer with the help of screening is that you're able to hunt those same stands over and over again without those stands losing their effectiveness. Again, on the flip side, if you're spooking deer on the way to those stands or when you're on stand, those stands lose effectiveness very quickly. So that's a brief summary on why you wanna be screening off your property from a hunter perspective. Again, you wanna be hiding your movements within your property to not spook deer to increase your chances at having hunting success. But there's also other reasons that you wanna be screening off your property and it involves deer social stress. When possible, you wanna to try to screen off areas of your property, improvements on your property from one another and in order to reduce, again, deer social stress. Doe family groups don't really get along well with one another and bucks during the hunting season, they don't really wanna be hanging out with other bucks or, or really other doe family groups outside the rut. So by breaking up your habitat improvements, whether it's your food plots, your bedding areas, your deer trails with different types of screens, you're making the deer feel more comfortable on your property. If you've ever ran a corn feeder and tried to observe the deer behavior when the deer are interacting around the feeder, one thing that you're gonna notice is that deer or different doe family groups do not want to share the same food source. The dominant doe in the area will oftentimes try to kick out those other does. Now that behavior isn't limited to feeders, it might be more concentrated because they're all in one small area, but the same behavior takes place in food plots as well. If you have a doe family in a food plot and another doe family group moves in, there's a good chance you could see the same type of behavior. And that's why when possible, it's a good idea to break up your food plots with screening. Instead of having one large plot, Try to have two, three, four different small plots. That way you can fit more deer in the same area. Now I just gave a food plot example, but bedding areas and deer trails are no different. You wanna make sure that you're separating bedding areas from other bedding areas with screening or bedding areas from food plots with screening. If you have a winding deer trail through your property, you wanna to try to make sure that's screened off from the food plot or it's screened off from the bedding area. That's gonna make the deer feel more comfortable as they move down those deer trails, as they bed in those bedding areas. They want to stay hidden from you, the hunter, predators, and also each other. An added bonus when working to screen the deer off from one another is that during the rut, the bucks are not gonna have as easy of a time finding a hot doe. They're not gonna be able to just stand in one spot and survey a bedding area or survey a food plot. They're going to have to work a lot harder to find a doe in estrus. And that's going to help you as the hunter, as those bucks are gonna be moving a lot more searching for does. So we just touched on two very important reasons on why you should be putting screening on your property. Again, hunter access and hiding deer from one another. 
But there's another factor that we need to make sure that we're accounting for when thinking about screening on our property, and that's our neighbors. With hunting and habitat management, it's very important that we're focusing on controlling what we can control. And unfortunately, the one thing that we cannot control is what our neighbors do during the hunting season. Whether that's hunting our property line or driving an ATV up the property line, or, or maybe they shoot deer that don't align with your management goals. If what your neighbor is doing on the other side of the fence starts to impact your hunting season, then it's a good idea that you need to screen that off. Deer cannot see property lines, but they can feel pressure. And if most of the pressure is happening on the other side of a screen, the deer on your side are going to feel much more comfortable moving during daylight and again, remaining consistent and predictable with their patterns. So if I could pick one of the more important reasons as to why I'd be putting in a screen on my property, it would most likely be one of those three, whether it has to do with hunting access or hiding deer from other deer or screening off my neighbors. Those would be the main reasons why I would be putting in a screen on my property. And that kind of brings us to the second thing that I wanted to talk about in this video. And we already talked about it a little bit, and that's what should you be screening? And as it relates to hunter access, if there's ever a point in your property as you're walking down your access trail that you can see into a bedding area or maybe you can see into a food plot, anywhere where you're standing on your access trail and you can see into where you think those deer are going to be, that spot needs to be screened off. You don't ever want to walk by an area of your property that has a really high chance of holding deer, like a food plot in the morning or maybe a bedding area in the afternoon and not have that area screened off there's just a really good chance that you're gonna be bumping deer as you move by that spot. So again, you need to make sure that that spot is screened off. Now, as it relates to separating deer from other deer, what should you be screening? I really like to break up big food plots. I really don't like having food plots on my property much bigger than a half acre. And even those can feel a little bit too big. I really like either smaller food plots or winding food plots where you can have one group of deer on one side of the food plot and as it winds around the corner, you can have another group of deer on the other side. Or you can just have smaller plots broken up with cover, hinge cuts, switchgrass. Even though it's easier, try to avoid having one large plot. Break that up into several smaller plots and that's gonna allow you to hold more deer in that area. We mentioned earlier bucks during the rut, trying to make it a little harder for them as they search for does. One thing you can do is during the off season or, or during the summer months, as you're walking through your property, if you're ever getting to a spot where you can just see too far, maybe, maybe you have a trail that's, that's too straight or maybe a particular part of your food plot, you can see into a couple different food plots. Those are areas where you can probably use a screen for the trail, maybe drop a tree in the existing trail to kind of scoot them around it, breaking up that sight line for the food plot, maybe plant switchgrass, maybe plant sorghum, maybe plant an apple or a pear tree, just something to break up that sight line so he can't stand in one spot and kind of survey your property. Again, you wanna make sure that he has to move around, he has to do more work, and that's gonna give you more cracks at him. And finally, we talked about screening off neighboring hunting pressure, and this is very important, especially for those of us with smaller properties. If we have a neighbor that is constantly spooking deer, doesn't practice good scent control, this can have a negative impact on our property. Uh, again, deer cannot see property lines, but they can sense pressure. So you need to do an evaluation on where the pressure is, and then you need to screen that off. Unfortunately, a lot of the times you don't realize that there's pressure until you've hunted that property for a few seasons. So if this is a new property, this is not something that you're gonna be able to address right away. But if you have hunted your property for a while and you do recognize that there is neighboring hunting pressure, you do need to try your best to screen that off. So those are a few reasons as to why you should be incorporating screening on your property and what you should be screening. But now let's kind of talk about what you can use for screening on your property and really, the possibilities are endless. It really just comes down to your own imagination. There's no one size fits all or, or, the, or the best type of screening. It, it really just comes down to your preference. Do you want an annual screen? Do you want a perennial screen? And to wrap this video up, I'll, I'll talk about the different types of screens that we've used over the past 10 years to either hide our hunter movement, hide deer from one another, or screen off hunting pressure from our neighbors. The first screen we'll talk about is an annual, and that means that you have to plant it every single year if you wanna have it as a screen, and that's hybrid sorghum. 
We planted hybrid sorghum and had great success with it. It gets anywhere from 10 to 14 feet tall sometimes, depending on the nutrients in your soil and the amount of rainfall that you get. It's a great screen, it creates a thick wall, and you can hide pretty much anything that you want on the other side of a stand of hybrid sorghum. Uh, we use it on our property up north to hide our cabin from one of our main food plots. A couple things I will say about the hybrid sorghum that we did learn along the way, some lessons that we learned. It does not like wet, cold soil. So sometimes in June, depending on the weather, it, it's not appropriate to plant that. I know in, in June, everyone's gung-ho about getting their screens in the ground, working on food plots, but sometimes it's better to wait on the hybrid sorghum screen. Maybe wait till uh, the last week in June, put that in the ground. You're just gonna have a lot greater success with your germination and, and your growth for that screen. Another thing that we learned is it's better to plant your uh, screen wider. We had maybe uh, a six foot wide screen one year and we had pretty heavy winds with wet snow uh, in, in November. What happened was is the, the, the wind blew the screen over and then the wet snow kind of laid it down and, and then by the time the snow melted the, the screen was just kind of laying flat on the ground. So we had a great you know, 12, 14 foot screen you know, all summer long and into November, but the second week of November, you know, smack dab in the middle of the rut, our screen folded over. But you, you learn your lesson, if you plant your screen wider, it's able to withstand more of that severe weather and you're not gonna kind of run into those same issues. So those are the two things that we kind of learned the hard way with our hybrid sorghum screen. So wait on the planting and try to plant your rows or plant your screen wider as opposed to thinner. So hybrid sorghum is the only annual screen that we've used. There is another annual out there called Egyptian wheat, very similar. We haven't used that in the past, so I don't really wanna comment on it, but again, it's very similar to sorghum. So if you plant that, you're gonna have very similar results. And now let's kind of move into the more permanent screens, uh, more perennial screens. And the first one that I wanna talk about is something you don't really need to do anything at all. And that's if you have a property with a little bit of an elevation change. And you can use elevation change as a screen, whether you're trying to screen off a food plot, a bedding area, or even your access. If you have a little bit of a dip on the side of your property and that's where you're trying to access, depending on the cover in between you and the deer movement, you might not need to do anything at all except walk along the bottom side of that dip or the base of the hill. I'm 6'2", and we have a spot on our property where there's an elevation change of about 10 feet along the edge of our property where it dips down into a low area, and I'm able to walk in that low area and really screen myself off with the help of that hill from the deer movement on the inside of my property. So that's a spot on my property where I don't really have to do anything in terms of screening. So if you're somebody with a lot of hills on your property or maybe just slight elevation change, depending on the cover in between you and the deer, you might be able to use that as a screen. And sticking with elevation change, but for those of you guys that have a property that's primarily flat, one thing you can do is create it yourself with a berm. I've been to properties where guys have brought in dirt, created berms to shield off their access, shield off food plots, and also shield off other hunting neighbors that were shooting onto their property. And based on the deer tracks on one side of the berm compared to the other, I can tell you that, that it definitely works. So if you're somebody with flat ground and you wanna to try to screen off a food plot, your hunter access, or screen off a neighbor, you can also consider putting in a berm. Now let's talk about a few different permanent screens that you can plant on your property. And the first one that I wanna talk about are conifer screens. And conifer screens work great once they get established. A few staggered rows of conifers, whether that's spruce, white pine, they will screen off just about anything. However, one thing I will say about conifer screens is eventually a lot of those trees are going to self prune their lower limbs. As the tree gets older, grows taller, it's not gonna put as much energy into the, those lower limbs as they're not getting enough sunlight. And so those trees are gonna self prune or basically shed those lower branches. And so if you've ever gone into an old pine stand, you can sometimes see right underneath all those pine trees. And if the goal of those conifers is to screen, then it's not really doing much good if you can see right underneath. Now, again, that does take a long time for those trees to mature and start to self prune, but eventually that does happen. So it's just something that you need to kind of plan on. Or if you don't want to deal with that, one variety that you can plant is a Norway spruce. Norway spruce doesn't really self prune those lower limbs. They keep the needles on there. So you can't really see underneath a row of Norway spruce. And so they also make a great option for a conifer screen.
Another perennial screen that you can plant on your property is switchgrass. And switchgrass is very popular among the hunting community, both for bedding and for screening. Uh, I have a, a strip of switchgrass behind me here. It's uh, getting to be, I'd say, over five feet. Again, I'm 6'2", and it's probably to my shoulders right now. So you can see we are in late July right now, and the switchgrass is doing a pretty good job so far of shielding off that food plot behind me. And by the time hunting season rolls around, it's probably gonna be six feet tall, and it'll completely shield me if I'm standing right here from that food plot. So as you can see, switchgrass makes for a great perennial screen. Switchgrass is a great option for screening off a food plot. It's also a great option for breaking up that one large food plot and creating several small food plots within it. Uh, one thing I will say about switchgrass is although it is a great screen, when you're on the same elevation level, it doesn't make for a great screen if you have any sort of elevation change and you're trying to access on the high side. So switchgrass, again, it's gonna be about six feet tall this year is my guess, and this is in its third year. It might ever only get to like six and a half, maybe seven feet if I'm lucky, uh, but, but that's not high enough to screen off my house that's behind the camera. Or if I, for some reason, was planting this on the side of a hill and I was accessing on the high side, you're gonna want something a little bit taller to hide your movement, like that annual sorghum that we talked about earlier. Or if you did not want to plant an annual and instead wanted to plant a perennial, you could plant miscanthus. And behind me, we have first year miscanthus. This was planted this previous spring. And you can see this is already over six feet. Now, it's not a screen by any means. You can see right through it. We did two rows. We staggered the rows. And over time, this is going to fill in. I, I think in three years, we should have a wall right here that I cannot see through. So not next hunting season, but the following hunting season. And again, the reason that we need to have a taller screen in this location is because behind the camera, my house sits up on a hill. So if you're a deer in the food plot behind me, you can still see the house on top of the hill. And deer in this area, if they see a car, if they see a house, they are just going to turn and run the other way. They have too much hunting pressure in this area. They do not want to see anything. So. Different areas call for different types of screens. Different situations call for different types of screens. Switchgrass in this location is not enough. We need to also have a taller screen. That's where miscanthus comes in. We can expect that to get anywhere from 10 to 12 feet, where the switchgrass is probably gonna top off at like six feet. So in, in a couple years, once the miscanthus fills in and I have the row of switchgrass, I can kind of give you guys a side-by-side -side comparison of both of those. The next screen that I wanna talk about is for those of you guys that have wetter soils where some of the other screening varieties will not perform nearly as well. One thing that you guys can plant is something that's called Streamco Willow. Streamco Willow is a hybrid willow. It loves wet soil, it grows pretty fast, and once established, it has multiple trunks growing out from the base. So if you plant a row of Streamco Willow, you can screen off just about anything in an area that has wet soil. Another added bonus with Streamco Willow is you can take the cuttings from the new growth and place those in areas throughout your property where you need either more cover or additional screening. Streamco Willow roots extremely well from cuttings. And the last screen that I wanna talk about in this video is for those of you guys that don't wanna plant anything on your property and you are also comfortable using a chainsaw, and that's a hinge cut screen. If you have an area on your property that needs to be screened off, and in that area you also have trees that are the appropriate size for hinge cutting, a hinge cut screen might be appropriate. On this property, we created a hinge cut screen on the west side of our property to block off neighboring pressure. Before we cut that screen, the deer would use the area, but as soon as our neighbor would ride his ATV down the property line, the deer would spook off in the other direction. Now, because of the hinge cut screen, it doesn't really matter what's going on on the other side of that wall. The deer on our side of the wall feel comfortable moving during daylight. As my neighbor drives by in his ATV, the deer do stop. They kind of look in his direction, but as long as he keeps going, which he always does, they kind of just mind their own business. Now, if there was ever an area where they could see through to the property line, see my neighbor drive by on his ATV, they would still run the other direction. So we needed to make sure that we did a great job of closing off a majority of the gaps so that we made sure that the deer on our property felt as secure and as safe as possible to keep their patterns consistent and predictable.
One thing I will say, if you do think you wanna implement a hinge cut screen on your property, is to make sure that you're hinge cutting on the lower side. You wanna make sure that you're, you're hinge cutting anywhere from waist high to thigh high, and, and maybe even some trees down to knee high. You, you don't wanna hinge cut much higher than waist high when you're creating a screen. And that's for a few reasons. And the first is because you do not want those deer to be able to see underneath your screen. Remember the conifer screen that we talked about earlier when those trees self prune and you can see right underneath those conifer screens. You, the same thing goes with a hinge cut screen. If you're hinge cutting higher, then those trees are going to fall higher and those deer have an opportunity to, to maybe see underneath that screen. And if they can see underneath it, then it's not really doing much for you as a screen. The second reason that you do not want to be cutting your hinge cut screen on the higher side is because you do not want those deer to be able to move freely through your screen. You want that to be acting as a barrier. You want to separate the deer movement from your movement or other pressure on the other side. If you cut higher, those deer are gonna feel more comfortable moving into that screen and they might even feel comfortable bedding in that location. And you do not want deer bedding within your screen if you're accessing just on the other side or if your neighbor is walking around just on the other side. So try to make sure you're cutting your hinge cut screens lower to discourage bedding, to discourage deer movement throughout that screen. But guys, I think that pretty much wraps it up for screening. Like I said in the beginning of the video, there is so much to talk about when it comes to screening that there's no way we covered all of it in this video. So if you guys do have any questions on what we talked about today or something maybe that you have questions on that we didn't talk about, please leave those questions in the comment section below. I'll get back to those as soon as I can and we will see you guys in the next video.